I'm pretty certain there's not supposed to be a gap here. I think this lathe would be a lot more rigid if the cross slide weren't just flapping around in the breeze. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. This is my Grizzly Geo602 lathe. If you've been around the channel for any length of time, then you know that the change gears in this machine were the impetus for developing the electronic lead screw project, though that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're gonna to take a look at a mechanical issue in the cross slide that's been there really since the day I bought the machine. Now, just for scale, this machine is sold as a 10 by 22 inch work envelope, which would put it in the same size class as a Monarch 10 E or a Hardinge HLVH, though of course this is a benchtop lathe that's nowhere near as heavy or rigid as those machines, even though they have a similar sized work envelope. This particular machine weighs about 400 pounds, about 200 kilos, so it's not a mini lathe, but you know, of course it's not a tool room lathe either. And these machines are well known for having rigidity problems in the compound. The compound is held down with a clamp that only has two bolts in it, and it tends to flex under load, so you do get some chatter and some rigidity that reduces the overall cutting capacity of the machine. And lots of people come in on these machines and replace the compound with a solid tool post. And I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. But as I was digging into it and making plans for that, figuring out what stock I need to order and putting a design together, I discovered something about this tool post that makes me less than happy. Let me bring you in and show you what's going on. The dovetail on the cross slide here should be bearing on the sides and on the bottoms. In fact, these wide surfaces at the bottom should be making contact and carrying most of the machining load. But if I take a 10 thou shim, you can see that the right hand side is not making contact at all. In fact, there's a gap all the way from the front to the back. There's no similar gap on the left, it's only on the right. So if I take a thinner feeler gauge, in this case one and a half thou, and start fishing around in here, I can see that the gib strip is actually making contact with the carriage on the bottom and with the slide on the top. I can fit it in over the top of the dovetail, but I can't get it in over the top of the gib strip. So the gib strip is actually too tall and is actually holding this thing up. On the left hand side, right at the front, there appears to be a high spot on the side of the dovetail that's actually striking the slide as well. There's a little bit of a gap as it goes back, but right in the front, there's a high spot. So I think the first thing to do here is disassemble this. We'll take the compound off, tear this down, and see what the fit is like without the gib. This is the compound clamp. There are only these two bolts. They come out easily, and then we're left with just the slide. Now, before I take this gib strip out, I wanna mark it, so I'm using an automatic center punch, and I will just put a mark on the top of the front and a mark, corresponding mark on the slide just to make sure that I get it back in the same orientation. And we'll take the gib pressure screws out here and once those are out, I should be able to push it out. Now, something is holding it up. I'm not really sure exactly what's holding it up, so we'll just go ahead and take the screw out so we can uh, pull this off the front. The whole handle assembly is just held in with two screws, and then we can unscrew the lead screw. You can see the whole thing's loose. I'm not really sure what's holding up that gib strip, but once this is out, uh, we can disconnect the nut and once the nut is disconnected, we'll just throw that screw on the floor. We didn't need that. And we can pull this right off the front. There's the nut, just fell down in the back there. And we need to do a little bit of cleaning on this thing. This thing is a mess. It's been several years since this has been off and so chips and oil just pack up in there. The gib actually looks pretty good. There are some signs of wear. You can see where it's been making contact, but all in all, it's pretty straight and it's pretty clean. I don't see any grooves or anything untoward happening there. It's kind of hard to tell the condition of this with all of the goop on it. We'll get this all cleaned off and we'll get the uh, saddle cleaned off here and just see 
how this fits without the gib strip in there. Now, without the gib strip in there, I can check to see if it rocks and does a tiny bit, but sure enough, with the gib strip out, this 10,000 shim will not fit in there. Now, a thinner shim will, so it is still hung up on the top of that dovetail on the right. That is still a little bit high and it is still holding it up, and the gap is pretty consistent. Uh, it doesn't fit in the left, and the, on the top there, we've still got that high spot in the front, so the whole top of this dovetail needs to come down. How are we going to do that? We're going to file it. I thought about trying to take the saddle off and take it over to the mill, but this is not a precision surface. This is not a sliding surface. It shouldn't be making contact at all. And so just draw filing this should be totally sufficient. Now, this isn't a fast process. It takes a while to remove the material, but uh, it's kind of fun. It's kind of nice to see the results and the surface turned out great. Now I'm just checking here to make sure that we really did get the top of the dovetail down far enough. I actually checked several times as I went and I think we've got this completely clear now. It's completely clear from the front. Check it from the back and make sure we're making no contact at all. And it looks like we are clean and down on the, uh, on the saddle. So now that we have the dovetail out of the way and we know that it's not hanging up the slide, we can put the gib strip back in and we've now isolated the effect of the strip. So if it's not fitting now, it's because of the gib. And sure enough, there is quite a gap here. So we're gonna need to narrow that gib strip and we need to know how much to take off of it. With the dovetail out of the picture, a 10,000 shim will fit in there, but it is dragging. So we've got maybe 10,000 clearance, maybe a tiny bit more. I think maybe taking about 20,000 off of the surface of the gib would be a good place to start. And that should be plenty without compromising the bearing of the gib. So over at the mill, I have my aluminum mini pallet clamped in the vise, and I have the gib strip clamped down on the edge of the pallet with a couple of little cylindrical stops and some strap clamps. This isn't super secure, but it should be sufficient to machine this. Now, just to make sure that I really have it parallel to the table movement, I've got a dial test indicator here in a holder on the spindle, and I'm running it back and forth just to be sure that it really is straight. And within a couple thou is close enough. This is not a bearing surface. It just needs to be mostly straight. Got my Randy Richard carbide dovetail cutter here. And I'll bring that in and touch it off. And once I find that contact point, I'll just zero the DRO, bring it in 10 thou, and make a pass. The clamping isn't super secure here, so I want to do this in a couple of passes. Uh, 10 thou is really nothing, and the clamps are actually holding this really well, so this isn't an issue at all. Make some adjustments to the spindle speed here and get this thing cutting smoothly and complete the first pass, and then come back and make a second pass, taking off another 10 thou. And again, the exact amount isn't critical here. I've got the brush just to keep the chips from flying out and landing on the floor. And since this is extended past the clamps, I'll go ahead and take a little spring cut, climbing back up it just to make sure that that's completely cleaned up. And you can see this cutter is peeling off a nice little curl of cast iron right off the gib. Pretty happy with that. Get this unclamped and see what the surface looks like. And looks pretty good. Good job, Randy. I like that dovetail cutter. Now I'm just going to assume that I did everything right here and this is going together for the last time. So I'll go ahead and oil up all of the surfaces. This is just whey oil and I'm spreading it over all of the moving surfaces liberally. This is way too much, but that's fine. It'll just run out and I can wipe it up. Set the slide on here and it does seem to be a nice flat fit there. I like that. Slide the gib strip in here and uh, get the screws in. Uh, these are just set screws that apply pressure to the gib and then have lock nuts on them. So I'll just run them down snug here so that the slide still moves freely, get it locked in position, and then we will check and see how we did. Got my feeler gauges here. I'll start with the thinnest one, the one and a half thou, and the gap is gone. Looks like success. 
So we do have clearance over the top of the dovetail and we do have nice flat bearing on both sides. I'm going to call that a win. Let's put the screw in, get that oiled up, get it started. And then I'll just go ahead and push it to the back while I put in the fasteners. And then I'll bring it all the way to the front so that it has the least amount of play and tighten everything down just to make sure that the screw is aligned and we get free travel across the entire distance. Put a little oil on the top and remount the compound. Now I do plan to replace this compound with a solid tool post at some point in the future, but for now, this is what I've got. So we'll get that tightened down, make sure everything is still moving freely and we should be ready to test. I've got a three quarter inch diameter piece of mild steel here and a high speed steel chamfer bit. This is just flat ground on the top with a honed edge. So there's no rake at all. Let's just push it in and see how it does. Now initially this will cut smoothly, it always did before, right up to about this point here. This is right about the point in mild steel where this lathe would start chattering and singing. That's about as far as I could go. But so far this is cutting nice and smooth. Let's keep pushing it and see what happens. See if all that work we did actually made any difference. As I said, this is this is really smooth. I have never felt the lathe this smooth. I mean, it, it had this bearing issue from the factory, and I guess I didn't realize how much that was hampering the performance of the machine. I thought it was just a lightweight machine and couldn't take heavy cuts. This is amazing. And right there, it was just starting to sing ever so slightly, but that left a beautiful finish. I guess I'm going to have to reevaluate what this machine can do. Can't imagine what it'll be like with a solid tool post. Well, that is a lot better than it was. It's now bearing in places where it's supposed to be bearing. It's not bearing in places where it's not supposed to be bearing. The action is smooth front to back. I'm happy with this. It's a big improvement. It's not perfect. The cross light on this lathe, it turns out, is slightly warped. While I had it all loose, I could tell that corner to corner, it does rock slightly. It's, you know, a thou or two. If I take it over to the surface plate, it has exactly the same rock. So I'm pretty sure the issue is primarily with the cross slide. It's something we can address in the future with grinding and or scraping, uh, but it's not something I'm gonna deal with today. For now, it, the lathe is usable and it is in much better shape than it was. Coming up in the future, I've got some other projects for this lathe. I do wanna make a solid tool post support and delete the compound just to improve the rigidity of the machine. And I have an idea for a different uh, quick change tool post that I'd like to put on it. So be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see that in the future. For now, I am just gonna use it as is. And uh, yeah, I know, I left out the dust shield. Why didn't you say something earlier while I still could have put it in? Now I'm gonna have to tear this all down so that I can put this part back. I'll do that off camera so you don't have to watch even though it is kind of your fault. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching.